Uh, today we're going to take a look at something that faces most 3D modelers, particularly character modelers, and frankly, most people dread it. Um, but fortunately, in Blender, it's actually a lot easier than A, it used to be, and also B, than most other programs out there. And that is simply um, how to unwrap the UV coordinates of a mesh, more specifically a human head. Um, the, the reason I chose a human head for this tutorial is that it's a more complex shape that's also dealt with a lot in character modeling. You know, any kind of character head is going to be complex to unwrap because any kind of stretching whatsoever that you have is immediately going to become apparent to the viewer. So it needs to be a very clean unwrap. Now, if everything that I just said is complete gibberish to you, and you have no idea what I'm talking about with UV unwrapping or anything like that, that's okay, just for a quick rundown. UV unwrapping is essentially, you take your mesh and just flatten it out. Um, and th what this then allows you to do is paint on each of the faces that comprise your mesh and allow you to paint details or put images exactly where you want them, such then when you render it, it'll um, match up exactly where you placed it rather than using a generated material where it's kind of a lot of guesswork. So, um, this is also used exclusively in games, any kind of high-res textures, everything. Um, it's one of the essential techniques that's needed. So, um, we're going to take a quick look at um, some of the features with Blender. So, first things first, I pulled up a head model here. Um, you know, fairly medium poly, nice poly distribution, etc. Clean edge loops. And what we want to do is just go ahead and unwrap this mesh. Now, the easiest thing to do is just hit A to select everything while in edit mode, which you can change down here or with tab on your keyboard, and just hit U, unwrap. Now, you'll notice over here, which is a, view, a viewport that I've set to the, the UV slash image editor, you'll notice immediately that I have what appears to be a flattened out version of the head. Now, this is kind of interesting. You, know, you look at it and we've got an ear over here, an eye over here, eye, nose, mouth, etc. You know, it, it's, it's interesting. But, you know, some would think that this would work. However, let me show you exactly why this doesn't work and why we need to add more control. If we, exam for example, go ahead and just add a new image and just say new 1024 by 1024 will work and let's create a UV test grid and then just click OK. Now you can see immediately that it's just created a, a, a test grid background um, and applied it to the mesh. But the main thing to notice here is look at the difference in the size of the grids up here and down here. This is what's um, it's called distortion and, and stretching within the mesh. And this is because the, the UV layout is not as evenly distributed as the, fate, as the actual mesh. To get a nice clean UV unwrap, we want to have our UV rep unwrapped faces uh, approximately the same size as the actual faces in the, in the 3D world. So, it's actually pretty easy to do this. I want to go back into edit mode, and what we're going to do is add a couple of what are called seams. And it's just like a seam in clothing is where it would fold out from, or where it's stitched together. So, we can do this simply by selecting the edges that we want to create a seam in. Let's first just, you know, stick one right down the center. So if we just hold down Alt-Shift, right-click, and click on that edge, we'll select the entire edge from the back down to the lips. Okay, let's just hit Control-E and Mark Seam. Now if I deselect everything, you'll notice that that edge is now orange. Okay, let's select everything again and see what happens now. If you unwrap, you can see it's split down along that seam, such that it's only connected down here where there is no seam. Essentially, you're cutting up your mesh. Now you'll notice that the, the grid is much more even, and frankly, it's pretty darn even. I'm actually kind of surprised here, but there's still a problem. Um, that being that if you were to try and paint on this, it'd be a lot more difficult, because what you want to have is to have your eyes lined up, and or excuse me, the main portion of the face, such as the eyes, the nose, the mouth, etc., lined up almost identical to an actual face, and then everything else just flattened out around it, as those are the prime areas of interest. So we can do this by just adding a few more seams and removing some of the seams. So first, from side view here, which I've gotten to by three on the, key, on the keypad, 
I'm just going to hit B to box select and select all these vertices in here. Now I really don't care which ones I have selected as long as I have these ones here, which I can now just hit Control E, clear scene. So now if we unwrap it, we'll notice a slight change. So now it's split down the forehead. And you know, it, it's a fairly even distribution. You know, it's not too bad. But again, A, you'll notice that it's rotated. And also it doesn't give us quite the control we need as things are still a little distorted, such as in the ears here, they're too small down here, too big up here, etc. So let's add just a little more control. The, the placement of seams really has to do with how the mesh will unfold. So it's very different for all different kinds of models. Now, it's, they're pretty much the same for any kind of head model, um, assuming it has a humanoid structure, just because since it has the same general shape, it's gonna unwrap evenly with the same kind of seams, in general. You know, there are, there are exceptions, of course. So you'll, now, you'll notice that I've selected these edges here by just selecting each of the vertices by shift right-clicking on them. And I'm gonna set a seam here. Okay, so now I have kind of an upside down T, which then travels all the way along to the back of the head. Let's see what happens now. Hit U, unwrap. A, you'll notice that our mesh is, is perfectly straight in the UV window. And you'll notice that things are a lot more even. Now, the main thing is that they're even here and pretty much equal to what they are here. But there's still a little distortion, such as on the nose and such. The, the nose, the ear, etc. Now there's a little more tweaking we can do, but frankly, if you were to take this map right now and use it as your paint, or as a painting reference, there'd be no problem really. It would work pretty darn well, and frankly, most people would never notice. But if you want to get just a little better, there's a couple of tools that Blender offers to allow you to do this. Let's go into the UV menu over here. And just hit UV, and we, what we want to do is minimize the stretch, which we can visualize the stretch or the distortion by going to, I believe it's view properties, and UV stretch. So now you'll notice the dark blue areas are where there's no stretch at all. And then the lighter it gets all the way up to bright red, in the case that it's extreme, is the amount of stretching. So you'll notice there's the most on the ears, even getting up to some green, um, etc. So it allows you to visualize how, how much stretching is going on. But you notice the key is there's very little within the actual face. That's really important. But let's go ahead and select everything, which again, it's just A, like you could in the viewport, and hit UVs, minimize stretch. And this will just run a small algorithm to generally try and get rid of some of that stretching. Now we can kind of compare it. Honestly, it didn't look like it did too much. If we hit undo, frankly, I think the first one's actually a little better. I think the main difference lies in the out outer ridge here, which if we do that again, we can check it out. So you see it's gotten a little better in here, but frankly it's a little more sporadic now. So I'm actually going to undo that. But instead, um, if I remember right, oh, no, right. Okay, what we can do now, if, if we want, you can leave it here or you can go for a little more control, is you can use the pinning features. And what this allows you to do is you need, first need to turn on Live Unwrap Transform. Well, now, don't do anything, as things can go pretty wonky pretty quick. But what we want to do is pin a couple of key vertices. And what this essentially means is grabbing hold of it and saying, it's locked right here, so it can't move unless we tell it to. So I'm just going to grab these two vertices here, this vertice, this vertice, this vertice, and this vertice. And then just hit P. And you'll notice that they've now turned red. Now, watch what happens when we, when we select them and grab it. With the UV transform on, allows us to dynamically change the mesh based on those two, those vertices that we've pinned. But you'll notice that the ones that are pinned never move from the original position unless I tell them to move. So, you know, just pinning these ones, I'm not really going to be able to get rid of much of the stretch. But you can see how if you were to go through and meticulously do it, you could really start to work things out. This is also very, very handy on very complicated meshes. Say, for example, you know, you've got a lot of tentacles, a lot of creases and folds, 
um, maybe, you know, four different eyes. You know, just think, you know, obscure and complex. This allows you to get that little bit of extra control that maybe just get adding seams doesn't work for you. So that's just a very basic overview of um, unwrapping a, a, a specifically a head in Blender, but you can do it with any, uh, any object. It's just mostly done in character modeling. Um, so there you have it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email um, at jonathan at montagestudio.org. That's also my website. So um, hope this helped and have a good one.